Uh, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, Michael Frensbeck here from Alpha Technologies. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. We are taking a look at the Biom Tessera DSP product line this morning. So, firstly, the, the Biom Tessera product line um, is essentially in its core a network audio or a, a network media um, DSP system. It is capable of doing audio and video uh, in various various ways, um, but the core of the system uses a protocol called AVB. Um, I'm sure some of you might have heard of it before, and some of you have definitely used it uh, with us in the past on on this platform specifically. Um, AVB is essentially uh, audio video bridging, uh, which the acronym stands for, and it is a real time media transport platform. And it's based on IEEE 802.1 uh, suite of standards. Um, inside that suite of standards, and you're welcome to, to have a look at Wikipedia, there's quite an extensive article uh, on AVB on, or AVB TSN, uh, as it's called on Wikipedia. Um, but the standards that it includes uh, are 802.1 AS, 802.1 QAT, 802.1 QAV, 802.1 BA. And then 1722 and 1733, which are all part of the, the IEEE uh, open standards. So what does AVB offer you? Um, the second part that I mentioned uh, a moment ago about AVB is uh, something called TSN, which stands for Time Sensitive Networking. And when the IEEE guys started developing this protocol, they found that it was actually doing more than, than just AV. So it's designed for AV, but it actually has uh, uh, further extensive uh, uses in inside uh, networking. Um, and essentially, the, the time-sensitive networking side, basically, they use that um, to make sure that certain packets arrive at, at the right time, um, at the right destination, and in sequence, which is exactly what, what AVB does. Um, for us as, as audio video guys, we want to know that any any information transferred and sent over a network travels to the right destination without loss and in sequence, right? So you can't receive, for instance, packet number eight uh, before you receive packet number one, because then the packet will just get lost uh, because it is out of sequence and audio and video is linear uh, in the way that we see and perceive it and, and hear it. So AVB basically guarantees that your packets arrive in sequence. And some of the, the other benefits that it, that it has or the way that it, that it does this is that AVB is actually a protocol that lives on the network switch itself. It's not a protocol that BIOMP uses or any other manufacturer has developed um, and uh, they don't ho hold the, the rights to it. It's an open source protocol and that anybody can implement into, into their product and into the network switch. And essentially it comes down to the fact that the network switch is then managing your entire network um, infrastructure and it's managing uh, bandwidth. So a couple of the points you'll see on screen there, it guarantees low network late, uh, transit latency. It has deterministic delivery of streams. There's precise time synchronization and automated lip sync when you're using it for video. And the system automatically reserves and does auto QoS, QoS for, um, or at least auto reserves the bandwidth. Um, or it does reserve the bandwidth and does auto QoS um, per port. So essentially you can open up the switch Go into its setup, and you can say you only want 30% of um, eight ports bandwidth to be allocated to AVB, and you want the other 70% to be uh, allocated to normal network traffic. Or you can have it the other way around, and you can have 75% allocated to AVB and only 25% allocated to uh, normal network traffic. Um, or you can open it up 100% if you want to. That's completely flexible and adjustable on the actual switch itself uh, in the setup of the switch. And the key thing here that it is, it's manageable and it's set up per port. Um, you can also, again, depending on the switch manufacturer, set it up to be uh, 
over the entire switch, but specifically you can uh, adjust it per port if you need to. The other part of what AVB does is if a device gets plugged into the network and the negotiation happens on that port and the switch finds that that specific port is not uh, AVB capable or that the device connected to that port is not AVB capable, it will actually turn off um, AVB on that port. And again, this is automatically happening um, in the negotiation once you, you plug a device in. So that means that you can essentially run regular day-to-day -day data networking alongside the AVB networking and higher bandwidth and um, higher traffic. And it actually doesn't affect your, your normal day-to-day -day, uh, systems. Because again, you can lock down how much of the network essentially gets used for, for ABB uh, in that sense. So that's really just a, a, court, a short uh, layman's term uh, explanation. Um, so if you guys do have any questions, you're welcome to get in touch with us on that. Um, maybe to, to just add some of the, the switch uh, manufacturers that are capable of doing ABB uh, already uh, includes uh, Netgear, Extreme Networks, and there's a certain of the Catalyst series, uh, there's about four versions of the Catalyst series Cisco switches um, that all are capable of doing uh, AVB. You can find all this information um, and the specific models and what their uh, throughput is and their uh, bandwidth capabilities are uh, on Biome's webpage. Uh, it's a, their support webpage essentially, support.biome.com. Um, there's an entire article on there. Uh, the web page is referred to as Cornerstone. Uh, as Biome says, that's the cornerstone of, of their support. And uh, any, anything you want to ask, you can probably find the answers uh, on, on that website. Um, so, yeah. So, let's start looking at the, the platform itself. Um, the platform is quite extensive and um, they are expanding and extending the capabilities of. Um, of the system. Uh, in Biome's roadmap, there's quite a, a long roadmap and a long uh, future for the product uh, as they've made it fairly flexible and uh, capable of being future proof and being expandable and um, essentially configurable um, way into, into the future. So, first off, we'll, we'll start looking at the, let's call them the head, the head DSP devices. Um, which are the, the three units here on the left-hand side of the screen. Um, we refer to these as configurable I.O. DSPs. We'll also take a, a look at the fixed I.O. DSPs. Um, we're not necessarily today going to look at the video servers. Um, we'll look at a, at, an, at a future time. We'll, we'll probably try and do a bit of a, a presentation on that as well. Um, I'll show you guys a separate presentation about all the different microphones. There's quite a few new microphones that's been released. Um, there's expanders, which essentially allows you to do audio input and output um, on the ADB network in various uh, locations that you can then process from any of the main head-end uh, DSP devices. And you can mix as many of the, the head-end DSPs as you, as you need to on the network. Uh, the system automatically calculates where each signal is processed um, and does the automated stream setup for, for the ADB side as well. There's a USB extender device, an AVB USB extender device, which will obviously allow you to run 100 meters. Uh, because AVB is a network protocol, the maximum length per cable is 100 meters, same as, as normal networking. So that will actually allow you to do 100 meters of um, network cable um, to do USB extension. And this last device here at the bottom is essentially a uh, modular expander, so it's the same as the remote expanders, but uh, rack mount um, with its own power supply. Uh, there's a series of power amplifiers, which we're also not necessarily going to look at today. We'll, we'll incorporate that into a future presentation. There is uh, just a little baby amplifier that's non-networking, a uh, very good little amplifier. We'll show you that in detail. Um, there's plenum rated amplifiers, uh, again, that are network based so you basically just run your ABB cable from your network switch to this amplifier and it's a four channel amplifier 
uh, about five watts outputs uh, per channel uh, continuous, and um, I think a maximum of 40 watts um, for the for the whole box um, as an instance or a, a high high power draw uh, scenario. And it's PoE powered, clean and rated, so you can install it into the ceiling and run run your low impedance speaker lines directly from from the unit. So you can connect up to up to eight. Uh, four um, uh, sorry, eight eight ohm speakers to it, uh, giving a four ohm load per channel on the units. Then there's a range of control devices uh, that we look at, and then BIOMS management platform that incorporates all their uh, their different uh, systems that you can manage from a central um, server. So if a company has a vast network of BIOMS devices, they can uh, manage uh, firmware updates. Um, see the health of the system, see what devices are active or, or offline, whatever the case is, uh, from a central point. So we'll start looking at the, let's call them the master servers. And the first thing to note is that Biomp calls these servers, um, a DSP server or a digital signal processor server. And that's exactly what they are. They have been designed on server topology. Um, so it is a device that is designed to operate 24-7, 365. Um, and it's designed for, for that long life and 100% uh, uptime. Uh, so it is an actual server class device in that sense. So this first unit, um, basically that's the, the front of the unit. And you can see some information displayed there. And there's a few um, metrics you can read off. Uh, the front, like your DSP's IP address, uh, any errors on the unit, etc. Uh, you can read all that information from from the front panel. You can't configure anything from it, but you can uh, at least read and uh, see information from the system. So the first, this first unit, the the Tashira server, is um, let's call it a, a non-IO server. So it doesn't feature any analog inputs or outputs. Um, cards or capability of doing analog inputs and outputs. Uh, the next unit will show you has, has that capability. But this unit can be put into a system um, as just a DSP. In other words, a, a box to, to do the processing. And as you can see, you can put up to eight configurable DSP cards into this device. Um, when you purchase one of these units, um, it always comes with, with a minimum of the one DSP card, because obviously then it won't function if it doesn't have that. So that's always got the one card in, and then you can expand up to eight cards uh, on this unit. This unit will also allow you to either do uh, one AVB card plus one Dante card. Um, so you can incorporate Dante and AVB on the same network platform. Or you can do a Dante and a CobraNet card. Um, for any legacy systems that are still running CobraNet, the system is also capable of, of doing um, any of the ADB, Dante, or CobraNet platforms um, available. And then for the guys that uh, are much into the IT, and um, I suppose we come, we come into contact with IT guys quite a bit in our industry as well, um, anybody that has 802.1x authentication on their network, Biomp is capable of complying to, to those standards as well, um, as you can see there on the bottom. So, as I mentioned, um, there's always a minimum of one uh, network card in the device. Uh, that is your general network uh, connection, and that's on, on card slot number three on the Tissure server. This uh, is the main connection and main link to control the, the platform. And as I mentioned, you can then populate two network audio cards, um, and that can be any any card, Dante, Cobranet, or AVB, uh, or a mix of two of those cards on this unit. The next device down, which is the Tessera Server IO, is the unit that actually features uh, analog inputs and outputs. There's 14 card slots on the back of the unit, and uh, card slots one through 12, are the slots that will, will take analog audio cards. Um, so you can see then uh, the cards are four channel cards, either input or output. Um, there's a variety of other cards there as well, which I'll explain as we go. But essentially, you can do up to 48 channels of analog inputs and outputs on a server I.O. device. It will also then allow you three DSP cards. 
So there's uh, quite a bit of processing that this box can do uh, by itself as well. Um, this unit also then um, will actually support ADB Dante and CobraNet all in one chassis. So if we go through the unit here, again, the first card or the, the, the card close to the power supply will always be your network uh, card for controlling and setup and uh, management of the device. Then you can have in card slots 11, 12, and 13, one of each of the networking cards, the audio networking cards. Um, so you can have a combination of any three cards uh, or up to two of each card uh, simultaneously. So you can have two AVB cards or two Dante cards or two Covernet cards uh, simultaneously into the system if you need more channels or more separation on uh, the, uh, the networking side, the audio networking side. Uh, the system also features then that what you can do is on, on card slots 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, and 6. I think it supports 6 if I remember correctly. Um, tele telecommunications cards. So that can either be a POTS um, normal telephone card, which has two lines of POTS on it, or it can be a VoIP telecommunication card which then has uh, two lines of, of SIP VoIP endpoints on that unit. So you can put a maximum of six um, VoIP or six teleco uh, cards into the device as well. And they fit on slot six through 12 uh, of the unit. Um, so slots one through 12 are basically shared for any of the, the additional IO uh, units. So again, as you can see, it's configurable in that, in that sense. And should you, for whatever reason, need more uh, analog input and output, um, again, that's extendable and expandable by the remote input and output expanders. Or if uh, it's a larger project, you can also put two of these to share a service uh, or two to share a server IOs into a network, um, or one to share a server IO and one standard to share a server uh, without IO. It all depends on, on the network design um, for that system. Right, having a look at the different cards available on the unit. Um, the first card here is a standard um, input output card. It has no echo cancellation and no uh, ambient noise compensation. Um, this is basically just your, your stock standard input card. Um, features four mic line levels, zero to 66 dB gain in six dB increments, and obviously features phantom power um, for condenser microphones. The next card is a standard output card. Um, and uh, my apologies, the, the acronyms on the cards are, are fairly easy. SIC4 stands for server input card. Um, SOC4 stands for server output card. And again, the four shows four channels. So this is just uh, for standard mic line outputs and they switchable mic line on both the input and output cards. The next card is your echo cancellation card. So a server echo cancellation card, again, four channels, um, exactly the same uh, mic inputs and mic preamps as the SIC4, but this time the card features echo cancellation, uh, four channels of echo cancellation on the system. Um, the system is designed in such a way that if you want to do echo cancellation on the Tashira server or the Tashira server IO, uh, sorry, on the Tashira server IO at least, you must uh, include SEC4 cards in order to get the processing capability for echo cancellation. And the echo cancellation processing chips are the two chips that sit here at the back of the card. That's essentially what gets used for the echo cancellation processing. And then we have the ambient noise compensation card. Uh, again, four channels. And again, in order to, for a system to do ambient noise compensation, you need to include this card because again, the processing capability sits on the card. So that in, in turn means that the master processor of the Tessera system does not actually process your echo cancellation, which allows you 100% usage of that DSP only for um, the general signal processing of the, of the unit. And they've separated off the echo cancellation um, and ambient noise compensation 
processing of a separate set of chips um, and uh, DSPs um, inside the box. Okay, next card is the telephone card. And as I mentioned earlier, it supports two lines of um, normal analog telephones. And um, it's basically a line in and then a, a telephone out extension on, on each of those ports. So the bottom two ports is line one and the top two ports can be line two. Next card down is your SIP card or SVC2 card as it's called and the server void card and again supports two SIP V2 endpoints um, and uh, we've uh, found that most um, applications we've integrated quite easily with uh, with this technology um, or with BIOM SIP um, protocols uh, with most manufacturers. There is a range of manufacturers that are certified or at least that BIMP is certified on to uh, to integrate with seamlessly, um, including Cisco, Avaya, and Mitel, um, just to name uh, one or two of them. Our next card is the actual AVB card, um, and this is the card that allows you to to do AVB um, protocol on the unit. And as you can see there, um, a single AVB card will support 420 inputs by 420 outputs um, per, per port, essentially. So that's quite a, a high throughput of um, audio information that, that the Sierra server and server IO units are, are capable of doing. Um, again, if you added a second network card, a uh, second AVB network card, you will actually get up to 840 by 840 channels of, of processing and throughput. Um, on the Tashira server or the server I.O. There's your Dante card um, that supports the standard Dante 64 by 64 um, channels. Uh, so seamlessly integrates into, into any Dante network as well. The last card for the audio networking cards um, is the Kubernetes card. And as per the Cobranet protocols, uh, 32 by 32 channels on this card as well. And again, internally inside the, the Tashira uh, platform or the Tashira software, you can route through matrixes any of the inputs to any of the outputs. And hence, you can connect and bridge different uh, network protocols um, together on, on the Tashira platform. Okay, there is the DSP card. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the Tashira server can take eight of these cards and the Tashira server IO can take up to three of these, these cards. And as you can see, very similar design to what you saw earlier on the echo cancellation card and the ambient noise compensation card. These are the same set of DSP chips that powers um, the echo cancellation and the ambient noise compensation as well as the, the master DSP of the unit. So quite, quite powerful. Um, as you can see on the, on the slide there, each of these DSP cards is e equal to the processing power of two AudioFlex units. Uh, AudioFlex is, uh, let's call it the previous generation of Biome's configurable uh, devices. I'm sure some of you have seen those uh, across the country as well in various casinos and malls and shopping centers and hotels and so on. Um, so again, by just maybe mentioning using Cobranet on the Tashira platform uh, in conjunction with either AVB or Dante or both, we can then connect to legacy AudioFlex systems or any other legacy uh, system that uses Cobranet uh, as its protocol. We can use um, the Tashira to integrate and then mix those systems together quite seamlessly. Okay, so those were the configurable I.O. devices. We'll take a look now at the fixed I.O. devices. Basically just means that they are fixed in their input and output analog um, channel counts. So there's a couple of devices in this, in this line. Um, they are all, to start off with, 12 mic inputs and eight mic line outputs apart from one model, which we'll, which we'll show you separately, which is designed for 
a specific reason and you'll I'm hoping you'll like what that offers as well but essentially there is a couple of different models in in the Desira Forte range uh, which is the fixed IO devices but for each model you also get a non-networking unit as you can see here the AI or audio interface without any audio networking you also get then one that has AVB networking and lastly you get one that has Dante uh, networking and you can see here just in terms of the processing capabilities of each of these fixed IO units the AVB channel count is 128 by 128 and the Dante counts 32 by 32 um, so all the all the models in the Tesla Forte range uh, feature the 12 mic in eight eight mic output and uh, it also includes eight channels of USB audio. Uh, a point to note is that the USB audio is only for USB audio. It is not for configuring the device or any form of control over the system. Uh, basically, what that means is you can plug the, the USB audio from the device into your laptop, and you can then use that as the sound interface uh, for any soft coded VCs. Uh, basically allowing you to have a single input and output channel um, with or without echo cancellation. You can choose whether you want to use the Sierra Forte echo cancellation or the Soft Codex echo cancellation, or you can use it as eight channels of audio to a computer and record it, or bring eight channels of audio into the Sierra uh, platform and uh, play that out or a mix of four in, four outs, and so on. It's very configurable in terms of um, the channel counts on the USB side. Uh, so this device um, basically does not feature any echo cancellation um, or any of the VoIP or telco um, telephone calling interfaces. So this is basically just an audio DSP, 12 inputs, eight outputs, and eight USBs. Uh, sorry, featured on, on the picture there is the Dante version of uh, the Tesoro Forte AI. So you can see it has the Dante port additional, so it is expandable on Dante network. And similarly, you get one that has the AVB ports as well and expandable on AVB. The next unit is the Tesoro Forte CI. Um, this unit now you will see that the microphone inputs have turned from green to orange. And that basically indicates to you visually that this unit has echo cancellation on all 12 inputs. Um, and that's the, the big difference between an AI and a CI, just that the CI now offers you the echo cancellation um, in the, the three different models as mentioned before. The last unit we'll look at is the, the VT, which stands for VoIP and uh, Telephone. And basically that unit, again, uh, has all the same features as uh, the previous two models. Um, again, like the CI, it features echo cancellation because it's a device that's used for, for audio conferencing. But as you can see now, there's also a VoIP tel telephone port and a normal analog telephone line port. Uh, the telephone line is still just a single interface. Um, so that just allows you one telephone line interface, but the SIP port um, is the same port or the same um, topology that is in the big server. So the SIP port allows you two interfaces to uh, connect two SIP endpoints uh, on a single single connection. So you can make two simultaneous calls um, to two different numbers or from two different numbers. And again, available in non-networking, AVB network, or Dante network capabilities. Okay, I mentioned earlier that there is a, let's call it a special unit. And that is the Tashira Forte VT4. Um, essentially, in, in its essence, it's exactly the same as uh, a normal VT, apart from the fact that it only has four inputs and four outputs. Um, and they come in only an AVB and a Dante version. So there's not a version of the VT4 that does not feature um, network audio capabilities. So you only get to show Forte AVB VT4 or the Forte Dante VT4. And these units uh, by developed to be a slightly lower cost version um, where you don't necessarily need to spend the, the money on 
the additional eight uh, inputs and four outputs. Um, but these, this unit is designed and positioned in such a way that it operates with AVB or Dante uh, ceiling or table microphones. Um, so there's uh, special DSP blocks that we can use for either Biome's AVB mics, which we'll speak about, or any of the Dante microphones available on, uh, on the market from, from some of the other manufacturers as well. Uh, so again, a lower cost unit, just so you don't need to spend the, the actual cash on the additional inputs and outputs. Um, it features four bigger cancellation um, ports as well. So other than that, 100% the same, the same features as all the other DSPs. So it's got the same DSP capability uh, built in, uh, but only reduced inputs and outputs. The Tashiro Amp A460H um, this is quite a quite a nice unit, and and we really quite enjoy this this little device. Uh, it is completely not networking; it's just a stock stand analog little amplifier. Uh, features four 60 watt um, channels uh, for amplifier output, 60 watts each. Uh, they are bridgeable to um, channel one and two together, or channel three and four together, which will then give you 120 watts output per channel. Uh, in order to get a 70 or 100 volt line, because the amp is switchable, uh, you do have to bridge channels together to, to get it to a 100 volt line. Um, so you can do up to 100 volt, uh, 120 watts uh, per channel output. And as I mentioned, no networking, no, no mess, no fuss, put it down, plug it in, wire it up, and the amplifier will, will do its job. This uh, little amplifier, as I mentioned earlier, there's a range of plenum rated um, AVB amplifiers. Uh, so this little amplifier, again, also features four channel outputs and essentially three watts continuous power per channel, but it can handle at a four ohm peak load, uh, 50 watts, or at an eight ohm load, 30 watts uh, momentary output. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, this is all powered over PoE plus. So you basically just run from your network switch, or if you, if you only have two devices, you can also run directly from the AVB port on uh, one of the AVB uh, DSP processes through a little PoE injector and up into your roof with a single cable to your amplifier. And then you can connect your speaker lines um, in low impedance mode directly to this little amp, which obviously minimizes your a cable runs to the roof and minimizes your uh, length of cable uh, in low impedance mode as well. And as I mentioned, it's plenum rated, so it's designed to be installed inside the ceilings. Looking at the Tashira EX mod, um, this is a modular expander, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so again, this is a, a rack mount uh, device and features 12. Um, or features up to 12 inputs or, or outputs that can be configured. And you'll see a, a range of cards there. Um, There's again a four channel input card, a four channel echo cancellation card, a four channel output card, or a two in and a two out card. Um, and this device basically sits on the backbone of the AVB network and becomes additional inputs or outputs to, to any of the DSP platforms that you might be using. Um, as I mentioned, there's your four channel input card. Uh, it's exactly the same card as what's in the large to zero servers. Uh, they've just changed the orientation of the card. Um, whereas the zero server, the card sits vertically in the chassis on the EX mod, the, the card sits horizontally. So they just changed the orientation of the connections of the card, but it's essentially the exact same cards. So there's four channels of input, four channels of echo cancellation. And again, you can see the echo cancellation processes. There's four channels of output, and then there's a two in, two out um, analog inputs and output card as well. And as I mentioned, you can configure three of these cards in any configuration on the EX mods um, to provide you any of the input and output counts uh, that those combinations will give you. Looking at the modular expanders, um, these devices again are PoE powered or PoE plus powered. 
Um, they basically, again, just sit on the AVB network, receive PoE plus power either from an injector or from the network switch. Um, and again, this unit offers you four inputs on the EX input. The EX AEC offers you four channels of echo cancellation. The EX out for analog outputs. And then there's again a two in, two out in the EX IO unit as well. Uh, the next unit down here is the Sierra EXUBT. As I mentioned earlier, you can look at this as almost like a USB uh, expander or extender. Um, it'll basically allow us to run 100 meters of network cable from the AVB port uh, to the network switch or directly to one of the DSPs uh, on AVB, either from uh, PoE plus power from the network switch or through a PoE plus injector. Um, again, this unit supports up to eight channels of configurable uh, USB audio. And the second part that this, or the second feature that this device offers, is it also has Bluetooth technology built in. So you can bring your telephone, your, your, your cell phone into a meeting, turn on your Bluetooth, connect with your phone to the device's Bluetooth and make a call from your cell phone and then utilize the professional audio equipment that's been installed inside uh, the room. It obviously won't do video, but it will allow you to, to do the audio side of a conference in that way. Similarly, you could use uh, Bluetooth from a laptop as well and connect it to the device uh, wirelessly, allowing you to, to use the laptop soft codec into the network audio system inside the, the boardroom or the meeting room. I mentioned earlier, we'll take a look at the beam tracking microphones. Um, there's actually a separate presentation for that. So I'm going to skip just part Pause this for a moment um, and just finish the rest of the Tashira uh, products. Um, and then I'll come back to uh, the Tashira Pole microphones, or at least the Pole microphones as Pine calls the product family, um, and explain to you how the technology works and what it's capable of doing. So, looking at control devices on the Tashira platform, um, there's quite a variety of different ways that we can control the, the biome to shares um, or for the biome to share to send out control commands uh, from it as well. Um, the key thing is that all these devices feature uh, RS-232 control, so all the DSP units, uh, the Tashira servers and the Tashira Forte DSPs can either be used or uh, send out RS-232 controls uh, or land-based um, protocols. Uh, so they support both uh, of those protocols. Um, again, on the Cornerstone website, uh, by support website, there's a document called the Shira Text Protocol, and that basically allows you to to see all the different protocols that can be be managed by it, and, and allows you to set up uh, APIs and uh, other third party controls. Um, again, there are modules from most of the control manufacturers. Uh, already available that uh, can be integrated into into controlling the Tashira uh, devices quite seamlessly. So first device here is an actual analog um, logic input or output uh, device. It uh, basically allows for 16 logic connections um, and you can configure these as either inputs or outputs. The last four of these uh, ports, uh, ports 13, 14, 15, and 16, uh, also are uh, voltage controlled. That features five volts um, on each of the ports. And this unit you'll see is PoE powered, not PoE plus. Um, so on this network port, uh, it's basically just control and PoE power um, to get the device operational on the network. So it doesn't feature any of the network protocols, the network audio protocols, because it's just basically providing control inputs and outputs. And inside the system, we can we can basically program these to control pretty much anything that the that a third party control system will be able to do, or that the API will allow us. And the logic controls inside uh, the biome, the Boolean logic that you can set up, 
uh, are capable of doing. So you can bring in mute triggers uh, from physical buttons um, for microphones or send out um, triggers to drop the projection screen or uh, all the likes. Uh, the Desiro Tech One device is essentially a touch capacitive uh, room controller. So it pretty much works like the old iPods used to work, where you have a push button in the center and a rotary uh, dial around the sides. And again, we can program on this unit 32 different actions, um, basically controlling anything uh, that we can control on, on the Desiro's. Uh, and in general, we use these to, to either do presets preset triggering or volume control or source selection changes um, for clients to be able to quickly access um, things inside their, their space uh, on the system. Um, again, the unit is PoE uh, powered or PoE plus powered. Um, so a single network connection on the control network and uh, the device will power up and uh, is capable of then controlling and being controlled uh, by the platform. Um, this year, Bayer brought out the HD1 hardware dialer. Um, basically, the device is there for any situation where you know, don't necessarily have a third party control system in a room so that you can actually access the telephony uh, functions of any of the Tashira DSP units uh, either on the analog telephone line or the VoIP telephone lines. And you can basically make uh, your telephone calls directly from from this panel and again single cable connection uh, back to your network or to your dsp directly um, through a poe injector or being powered by poe uh, from the network switch the last uh, form of control uh, that we can allow users to have is uh, the biome canvas software uh, this is basically a, a completely customizable gui interface uh, and again, any feature that we can program on the Biome uh, Sierra programming side for the signal paths, uh, we can control any of those elements from the software. Um, the key thing here is the unit does require uh, a Windows PC uh, or a third party touch panel for the actual software to be installed. So it's not necessarily an application as such, um, like an iOS or a Android app. It's a Windows-based software installation. In general, we've used these quite successfully for casinos and uh, hotels and larger conference rooms where they want to be able to, from a central point, control the, the audio system and allow certain users to have certain access because you can set up different user access levels. Uh, so some users can, can only access volume controls. Other users we can set up to have volume and source controls and then you can even give uh, um, a manager or a senior technician or whatever the case is uh, on site full control over the system that they can pretty much uh, change any any other settings we've we've programmed for them on the system the key piece of software for for the biome platform uh, the Tashira platform is the actual Tashira software itself the Tashira software is the tool that we'll use to actually program what these DSPs are doing. Um, you can see on the on the screen there, there's uh, just a little sample of the inside uh, view of the unit uh, that basically allows us to program uh, the signal paths and uh, what DSP blocks are, are being used um, from. Spencer, just mute your microphone, please, sir. Welcome. Sorry, guys. Uh, so that that allows us to actually set up the platform to to do what we needed to do, uh, and again, it's completely configurable in the way that we use the the DSPs to process uh, the audio signals coming in and out of the of the system. As I mentioned earlier, there is also 
the Tashira management uh, platform uh, called SageView. Um, this is a new platform that Biomp has uh, developed. Uh, I think it was released beginning of last year. The platform basically allows to be installed on a centralized server, and then it allows IT or external parties to, if the, if the IT will allow it, to connect remotely um, to the to the whole system and monitor health and uh, well-being of the system to see what systems are actually in use, which ones are are active, uh, are they all on the same firmware, are they on the latest firmware? You can do firmware deployment from the system for the whole network, uh, basically uh, allowing a central control over the system. Lastly, uh, by features, uh, mailers, and things that they that they offer from their side, they uh, you can basically go to Biome's webpage, biome.com. As you can see from the top there, you can subscribe to their newsletters uh, for any uh, new information, product information. Uh, some of the webinars that they also host, you will be able to then receive those webinars, uh, all those information from them. So you can always stay up to date with the latest uh, BIMP uh, news and information. So if you allow me two seconds, I am just quickly going to be switching the presentation for the microphones. At this point, I'll uh, just quickly have a look. Uh, any questions for anybody? Uh, again, as I mentioned in the chat earlier, you're welcome to post the, the questions and uh, our team that's working with us in the background will, will answer them for you uh, for uh, those questions. I can see there is quite a few here. Um, I'll allow after the presentation, we'll have a look if there's anything specific that uh, anybody wants to uh, to ask or at least any, any specific questions that we can uh, perhaps answer them. Um, for everybody, uh, that might be beneficial to everybody. We'll have a quick look. Okay, moving on to the Biomp Parlay microphone series. As I mentioned earlier, uh, just doing this as a separate presentation because it's a little bit more complete than uh, than the original one. Uh, Biomp has made quite a extensive. Uh, expansion in the product line. As I mentioned earlier, they, they have a long roadmap for this product line to roll out new products uh, as time goes on. And as they see things develop in the market, they're always trying to stay uh, on top of it and uh, able to, to, to give the best uh, technologies and best features out of their, out of their product, uh, products in that sense. So there's a couple of different microphones here uh, in the Biopole range. This is essentially a AVB microphone platform, and it features Biome's patented beam tracking uh, technology. Biome was uh, a couple of years ago bought a company that uh, they were basically featuring or, or developing uh, beam tracking technologies. Uh, they purchased this business, and they then took the, the development further and developed a range of products from that technologies. So basically, the the DSPs uh, makes the microphones a little bit smarter. So when you incorporate the Biome Apollo mics into the Tashira DSPs, uh, there's a synergy between the two devices in terms of how it processes audio signals uh, from the mics. Um, quite easy out of the box setup um, inside the the Tashira DSP itself. When we program the Polo mics, there's a, a set block that we use and drop in, and Biome has pre-configured the internals of that, let's call it a custom block, as they call it, uh, that has some features already programmed in. Uh, again, it's flexible, you can make some changes to those, uh, but the, they've set it up in such a way that you drop in the block, do the rest of your programming, and the microphone is 95% optimized, I'll call it, for, for that room. Uh, each of these microphones uh, uses a single channel of echo cancellation. So the microphones will mix their own lobes and each mic will do its own mixing. And you'll see now how the, the capsules work inside the microphone. So there's multiple 
uh, microphones inside each unit uh, that basically mixes that and allows or just brings you in one channel over ABB per microphone. And there's a combination in different ways that you can, can have multiple mics in a room. As I mentioned, this is a patented beam tracking technology that uh, BIOM developed from the technologies from this company that they bought a few years ago. Uh, very easy to deploy and quite, uh, quite focused in where the microphones point to and how the microphones uh, function uh, inside a room and the capability of actually tracking somebody that walks uh, or moves inside the room uh, quite easily. In terms of some tools that, that Biome has developed in order to, to know uh, how many microphones, which microphones, how, how they need to be placed, what their coverage areas are, they've developed a series of um, online calculators. As I said earlier, the Cornerstone webpage, uh, very, very intense, uh, sorry, very extensive uh, in its features. You can um, search on Google, just buy them. Uh, microphone calculator or by Impala calculator and you'll find two different versions. The one will be for the table microphones and the other one will be for the ceiling microphones. As you can see on the right hand side here, for the, the example is for the ceiling mics. In here you can select which of the two mics you, you're using, TCM1 or TCMX, which I'll show you the details of now. You can set your ceiling heights. Again, you can select feet or meters. Are your audience seated or, or standing? What's the, the room acoustics like? You give the size of the room and it'll tell you each of these circles, which uh, or how big the, the microphone's pickup is inside the room and how many microphones you would need uh, inside that room. There's also at the right at the bottom here, there's actually a bit of a sample here that they've created. So you can listen to good acoustics, bad acoustics, poor acoustics, perfect acoustics, and get a bit of a sense of how the microphones perform inside uh, rooms with those average um, acoustic uh, properties that they've applied uh, to this little listening algorithm at the bottom of the page here. So that's what I mentioned now. You can actually hear what the room will sound like um by using this little calculator at the bottom and this tool is like i mentioned available for tcmx tcm1 which is the share ceiling mics and ttmx which is the share table mic uh, all of them feature that calculator and you can find that on on their website okay so let's look at the beam tracking basics The beam tracking microphones don't require somebody to sit still in a room and doesn't require any setup of saying that this is where my audience is seated and uh, you don't have to fix your audience in place uh, at those specific seats because the microphone will actually track you around the room. And how it works is the, the person can move around the room and based on which microphone was selected, the microphone will use its capsules inside the amount of zones that the microphone is divided into. Uh, this specific one, you see the example is TCMX. Uh, the microphone is divided into four zones. And if I just run the graphic for you again, you'll see it move from different colors, basically mixing the microphone uh, polar patterns and tracking the person while the person is walking inside the room. So the TCM1 was, let's call it the original version of these mics. Uh, a lot of you guys might have seen this and, and used this uh, before. They uh, featured the TCM1, which is, let's call it a master unit. Uh, it's a head end box plus a pendant microphone. Uh, it also featured the TCM1A, which is the same as the TCM1, but you'll see in addition, it actually has the amplifier module built in, and this is two channels of the same amplifier module that's in the four channel plenum rated amp, and they just scaled it down to two channels. So again, single cable connection from your, your DSP or from your network switch up into your, your roof, and uh, you do your amplification and your microphones from the all in one go. Okay, 
The last unit here is the TCM1 uh, extender or expander. You can use either a TCM1 or a TCM1A with up to two expanders daisy chained from the microphone output here into that input and then from this output into the next microphone's input and you can basically data chain three of the TCM1 pendant mics together on a single network connection with a single PoE plus injector or PoE plus powered from the network switch. So that was the original TCM mics. The new versions are referred to as TCMX, as I mentioned, the Sierra ceiling mic and TTMX, which is the Shira table mic. And you can see these units both come in black and white um, to suit uh, those various applications. Uh, what you will see also here is there's a bit of a light ring around the microphone there and the light ring around there to indicate the microphone's activity. Green for active and red for muted. You can uh, mute the microphones. You can see for the table mics, there's a little button there above the the logo, you see that little button over there, but that is actually a mute button. And uh, for the ceiling microphones, you would need to mute that from a third party control system because obviously the mic will be up in the roof. So, looking at the TCM X and TTM microphones, uh, here's a bit of an example. There is a TTM microphone on the table, and you can see the LED ring is red, so that microphone is muted. Here, you can see the pendant mic hanging and there you can see the TCMX mic that is active. It's uh, green LED is on. Um, design goals for the system is that a ceiling microphone should be only be seen when it needs to be seen. Uh, clients need to be able to walk into the room and, and have an effective meeting without worrying about uh, whether the system is functioning correctly or, or not for them. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, black and white versions of these available. Uh, looking at the way that the unit is installed, uh, again, it's uh, plenum rated. You basically drill your, your hole in the ceiling. All that bracketing you see there is included um, hardware for the mounting, and you can mount it directly to the ceiling tiles. So the washer and the nut at the, at the back all included. Uh, in the system. Again, as part of what BIOP is trying to achieve and uh, to make things easier for installations, um, this basically all just runs on network cables. So you basically have network cables in your vehicle for most of your installations, and you can now just use this for this part of the audio installation as well uh, to use uh, CAT5 or CAT6. Uh, cables and most of us have have these tools and we can either use pre-made or on-site made cables um, and easily install the systems in in quite a quite a quick uh, way so how is my coverage impacted by distance how do we sound uh, extra extraordinary farther away so the flat array it reduces the height um, on the actual ceiling versus the, the pendant mic that obviously hangs down. Um, there's tighter beams in the larger array. There's 16 mic elements inside this uh, ceiling microphone. Um, essentially, it is divided into four zones. And in each zone, the mics, uh, there's four microphones doing phase and delay and uh, equalization per zone and allowing you to, to be able to track or to be tracked through the room. Um, if you think about ceilings and some problems that we could face, there's HVAC noise, there's noise from floors, noise from adjacent rooms. So how did Biome get, a, get past that? If you look at uh, generally how a microphone would uh, would perform um, on the back of the capsule or the the rear side of the microphone capsule there will always be uh, residual beams being formed uh, that's just how how the audio physics work 
And what BIOMP has done is that when you mount the units uh, against the ceiling, they've allowed for a loaded mass vinyl um, at the back of the microphone, which limits your beams or your, your pickup from the rear side of the microphone um, so that you don't get the ceiling noise or the HVAC noise uh, from all noise from adjacent rooms being being picked up by the microphone itself. I mentioned earlier, um, there are four tracking zones uh, inside the, the TCMX and the TTMX mics, which is the table mic. Um, you can see there, we mentioned earlier, there's 16 uh, capsules inside the microphone or 16 individual microphones inside the, the, the array. And basically it allows for four per zone and that allows us to, to do the tracking. You'll see from this image, uh, basically this is taken from the Tashira platform itself uh, when you're live on the unit and it shows you what microphones um, are tracking where and you can see that they separated into four different, different colors. Uh, connections of the system, your, your master connection for the AVB control ports, which will come from your AVB network. Uh, again, like I mentioned, other being directly from the network switch, which must be PoE plus. Uh, if it's not a PoE plus network switch, you can use a, a PoE plus injector in line in the unit. And then, and then you can connect. Uh, when you purchase the unit, you'll get one TCM mic plus the, the plenum control box, this little plenum control box in what's referred to as a TCM X. And you can then extend this capability with an additional expansion mic, which is just the TCM X EX. Um, and so basically one control box can house up to two microphones and process up to two microphones inputs and mixing together. Again, like I mentioned earlier, each of these microphones, so the mic on the left and the mic on the right on the screen will each use one channel of echo cancellation. So if you were to use a TCM X microphone with a Tashira Forte AVB VT as an example, you will be able to use two of the four echo cancellation channels uh, for these two mics, which means you can add another TCMX microphone plus another TCMXEX connected to that uh, one and process four microphones in a room, uh, should you need to, to do that. Uh, and that's where the, the scalability comes in. So this example of the first two microphones the second two microphones, the third two microphones, and so on and so forth. And you can scale this up as many channels as what the, the network uh, will handle. Um, so if you're using a Tashira server with AVB, 420 inputs and 420 outputs is what the server will handle. Or on a Tashira Forte uh, device on AVB, it will handle 128 by 128 channels. Uh, so there are limitations in, in, in that sense, but in terms of the network, um, you also have to make sure that it's set up correctly um, and there's allowed for enough processing for, for all of this. So if you look at this example on screen, you would need six echo cancellation channels for this setup. So you would then default back to one of the other Tashira Forte devices, should this be all in one room, uh, which you can do. You can have all six microphones in one room if need be, if it's a, if it's a larger space. Um, this uh, slide just basically shows that the, the microphone has been certified for plenum and, and air spaces, so it is suitable for that installation and certified to that to, to those uh, specifications for UL 2043. In terms of its setup, there you can see your, your ceiling tile, the microphone and the uh, plenum box uh, just showed us separately. The ceiling tile gets the, the hole drilled and you can mount the, the plenum box in the ceiling and then again you can you can add the second microphone uh, to this to this box as well and just run your, your single network cable down uh, per box to your network or to your AVB system. There are some additional uh, 
uh, items that you can can purchase uh, like the tile bridge kit uh, should the ceiling not be able to actually handle the the weight the ceiling bridge kits uh, will support that for you and that's uh, called a tv1 uh, again uh, ordered as a separate accessory to uh, the actual tcm x or tcm1 microphones In case somebody requires you to, to actually have a uh, box in the roof, you can have a standard four by four ceiling box uh, with it. Or alternatively, there's the TCM X DK uh, box, which is designed specifically for the, or sorry, the, the TCM X DK mounting bracket is designed to fit onto any standard four by four wall box uh, or ceiling box. And that'll allow you to, to mount the microphone effectively in, in that as well. Okay, so difference between a TCM X and a TCM X A box is again just the addition of two amplifier outputs. Um, this is very similar, or it is similar outputs than the TCM1. Uh, a version that, uh, that I showed you first with uh, the drop down um, golf ball biomp mic. Um, what biomp has done is, as part of the the Sono speaker range, they have made the, the Sono speaker range to function on network uh, cables and network uh, connections as well. So those two ports uh, are used um, for those. They have now recently released a little converter device that will allow you to run network cable out of this amplifier to any conventional speaker that has normal Phoenix terminals on it. And then the little converter device, you'll plug in at the end of the, the network cable and that will allow you then to just convert from network connection to normal Phoenix uh, connection. So there is a little converter now available for these amplifiers that you can actually convert it back to a standard Phoenix connection that'll allow you to connect to any conventional um, speakers. Looking at the TTM X table mic, uh, the mic is quite, quite small, um, only 110 millimeters in, di in, in diameter and 18 millimeters high. Um, Very slim, slim line design, um, and it helps the mic to disappear on the table. And there is just a bit of a reference to one of the competitor mics. The microphone has uh, a little port at the or a little slot at the bottom. Um, you can either have the microphone's uh, cable that it that it comes comes with. It's basically got its uh, network cable already mounted on the unit. A little short two meter uh, network cable. You can either have that network cable come out directly underneath the units or come out the side of the microphone, depending on your, your installation uh, requirements. Okay, there's been a couple of uh, enhancements with these two Parler microphones uh, on the Toshua platform. Uh, in the past, with the TCM1 pendant mic, you could not turn certain zones on or off. Uh, now, if you look at the tracking zones, we can either combine tracking zones or we can actually turn some of the tracking zones off. As you can see here on the, on the indication, these two tracking zones have been, been turned off on the microphone. So you can then limit where the mics are, are pointing and where they are, are actually picking up audio from. Also, you can adjust the tracking zones to be larger than just the four separate ones, or you can separate um, tracking zones and make them smaller as well, which is quite a nice, nice feature that's been added. So, as a use case example, you can use that in a scenario like that where you want to pick up various uh, rows of seating inside a room. Uh, you can basically then place one microphone for each each set section of the room or section of tables and turn off the section of the mic that points towards the, the front of the room so that you don't get any rear reflections 
uh, coming into the mic and uh, confusing the, the processing of the microphone. Uh, because essentially, if somebody's voice reflects off of the, the wall in the front of the room, the microphone will, will track that as well. So you can turn those zones off and uh, optimize the tracking and the, the coverage of the microphones. Another use case is something, something like this, where you can exclude these gray zones on the side here from, from the tracking um, and pick up of the mic. Okay, that is in a nutshell uh, from us for this morning. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed that. So thank you guys for joining us. Again, if you have any questions, please get in touch with us. We are available um, to help you and support you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, see you again soon.